Coming up on DTNS, it's our 2023 listener episode. We have a current tech events quiz, a geeky debate, and we'll decide what gadgets should go onto the Mount Rushmore of tech. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, December 26th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from studio, I don't even know where I am. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. That's right, folks. Everybody on this show should realize it's December 26th, the day after Christmas, 2023. That's the day it is when you say anything on this show. Uh, welcome to our end of the year listener show. This is the annual episode where we invite several of our supporters to appear alongside us right here on the show. And uh, there was a listener suggested, why don't you do some of those Friday quizzes, that GDI fun stuff in the show? So we decided to take a cue from our Friday GDI. And we've made this episode the quiz and debate show to play along with us. Uh, thank you to everybody who submitted uh, your name. Uh, there were obviously way more people uh, than we could have on the show. Uh, but Roger uh, used a, a very uh, sincere and complex method uh, to narrow it down to these three people. Uh, welcome to the show, Sang, George Sang from London. It's good to have you on the show, man. Indeed. Uh, and thank you for the support, which I will be saying to everybody, uh, including Tom D, a.k.a. Captain Jack 913. Welcome, uh, Tom. It's good to have you. All right. Good to be here. Uh, <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you for your support. Uh, and longtime supporter of not only this show, but lots of other shows uh, that we've done. Gary Fisher, welcome back. Uh, thanks for having me, Tom. I think I told you about seven or eight years ago I was going to figure out a way to get on your show, and I finally did it. <laughs> and you did it. That's <laughs> fantastic. Uh, Gary, thank you for your support uh, over all these years as well. Uh, Sarah, we have our contestants. We do. All right. For this challenge, we have 10 tech questions that are based on actual tech stories that we have covered on DTNS over the past year. Now, all of you may remember these stories, but maybe not all the details associated with these stories. So the way it's going to work is if you think you know the answer, raise your hand. We call on you. You give us an answer. If you're right, yay, you had a point. If you're wrong, somebody else gets to try. Are we ready? I'm ready. Yes, all I am. right. All right. Ready as Tom we're... D., George, and Gary. Playing some fun trivia. Question number one. How much did Twitter sell for? Gary. Was it 40 billion? You're close, but not quite. 44? That's correct. <laughs> don't know that you were supposed to get two tries in a row, <laughs> but nobody else volunteered. So, you know, we're just going to, we're going to make this up as we go along. All right. Gary gets a point. Woo! Is anybody keeping score? If not, I'll do it right here. All right. And question number two. Which of Google's large language, mod large language models was BARD originally based on? Tom. It wasn't Gemini, was it? It was not originally Gemini. Um, no, uh, Gary or George. No idea. All right. The correct answer is Lambda family of large language models, LLMs, were later upgraded to Palm and then Gemini. All right. So we got Gary for question one. Question two, nobody got. But hey, you can all come back for question three. What is the process size in nanometers of Huawei's Kirin chip found inside the Mate 60 smartphone that supposedly worked around U.S. technology export controls to China? Gary. Four microns? No. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process one might say yeah this is a this is the what is the process size in nanometers so microns would not be the correct answer four nanometers <laughs> it's not four gary okay <laughs> george or tom d either of you want to take a, a 
Let's go, Tom. Uh, I don't guess 25. I'm three nanometers. Well, you're both wrong, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> Tom gets to do the wrong button. Uh, but uh, I might not have remembered this either, to be honest. All right, everybody had a guess, and the uh, answer is seven nanometers. Lucky number seven. All right, seven. moving on to question four. What is the name? of Jeff Keighley's summer event, which now has de facto replaced E3 in 2023. Anybody who watched the show today, you would have heard it. Oh, I mean the show. You mean the ago. show last on week? On December 12th. On yeah, yeah, way back, back, on back. On two weeks 12th. ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. I don't ago. remember that right. far back. No, when no, I used to no. that makes sense. a Gary. show from a garage. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Why'd you go just, back to that look? This just classic just, end of year. I just thought it would be kind of fun and retro for just the show today. So you created a background. All right. Jeff Keeley's summer event. No more E3, but we still have Gary. E2? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like it. I like where Points you're going with that, but unfortunately yeah. not called E2. Uh, Tom D. Nintendo Direct. I don't no, know. not Nintendo no. Direct Plus, either. We're getting farther away, I think. George, want to guess? Yep. Um, Game Vest. Now that sounds similar. Game sounds Festival. similar, but unfortunately, no one got this right. It is the Summer Game Fest. I think we give him points for getting two thirds. All right, all right. You get two thirds. Two thirds so, of a point. So yeah, Gary, Gary is in the lead with one, with George in a close second place with two thirds. Tom D still at zero, but Tom D, you can take it back now. In question five, what date did Netflix's D D DVD service officially send out its last discs? This is pretty specific. All right, Gary, I think you, I think you want it by hair there. I'm gonna guess October first. Now you are close. You are very close, but not quite right. Tom, your hand was up as well. September 30th. Oh, even closer. My gosh, even closer, George. George. <laughs> September the 31st. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, you went the wrong way. Also, oh, September only has 30 days. <laughs> September 29th. That's the one. That's the one. All right. Now, Gary, we let you guess twice, but hey, this is a fun hey, I game. I had my hand up. I had my hand up. We're all having fun. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. You're right. Okay, so that's question five. Gary gets the point. Question six. Attackers exploited a vulnerability in what application to install malicious key logging software on a LastPass employee's computer that would lead to a massive data breach at LastPass? What is the app that had a vulnerability exploited within? George almost has it. I can see it. I can see it in his brain. People who like media are really <laughs> into this company, myself included. Weird flex, Sarah. Mm, weird flex, but it's okay. Like Tom D beat me. All right, Tom D. <laughs> First thought was Winamp, but probably not. It's not Winamp. Gary. YouTube? Not YouTube. It more acts as a storage application for media, beloved by many. Gary. Uh, Dropbox? Not Dropbox, although that's a good guess. George? You didn't even raise your hand. Uh, Just take a you. crack, George. You can do it. <laughs> you got this. Take a swing. No? Nothing? No. Nope. Google right. Drive. Ah, Google Drive. Wrong! <laughs> <laughs> what? How dare you tease them like that, Tom? I hit the wrong uh, button. That really wasn't meant to be as mocking as it came off. <laughs> okay. Uh, the correct answer is the Plex media server. Plex. Ah. Wow. Wow. I know, I know. I, I might not have gotten that either, and then I would have kicked myself, because uh, I love Plex. It's one of Watch favorites. out what apps you use, folks, even your Plex media server. It's true. Okie dokie. This one, uh, she's been in the news a lot lately. What was 
current CEO of X, Linda Yaccarino's previous job. Where did she work? Like not McDonald's in high school, but like right before X. Yeah, like where was she poached from this year? I don't know if she worked at McDonald's. She worked in, in I'm trying to give you I would have thought she was proud of that job. But Oh, that's not a helpful hint, Tom. I know what you're doing. Um, Apparently not. How about how about this? How about this? We know that she was hired by X um, to help boost advertising revenue because she's got a lot of she's got a lot of uh, history with that. What company did uh, her history with advertising give her a good reputation? Tom D. Google. Not Google. Not Google. Alphabet. Gary. Not Alphabet either. <laughs> More of a one would say a legacy company. You're, these these are advertising companies. You're right, but not the kind of advertising company that Linda was. All in. right, George. Mm, Yahoo. Not Yahoo. Not Yahoo. Anybody else want to take a crack? All right, three cracks and you're out. It was <laughs> NBC Universal. She was head of advertising at NBC Universal. Yeah. Oh, the proud, proud bird. Okay. Uh, yeah. See. Yeah. That's. I mean, it's a. It's a great hint, but just you know, who's gonna get that? All right. Um, question number eight. What is self-driving taxi service Cruise's parent company? Who owns Cruise, the autonomous vehicle operation? Tom D. Waymo? It's not Waymo. Waymo is a competitor to Cruise, but not the owner. Gary. Sorry, Alphabet. Not Alphabet either. Alphabet owns Waymo, though. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. People get Waymo and Cruise. They, they those, those are often uh, they yeah. get them mixed up. George. Uber. Not Uber. Not Uber. Although Uber has its own autonomous. Uh, um, hop, 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 operation as well. Gary. Meta? Not Meta. Think of this as more of an old school type auto company. Might have been around for a minute or two. Generally speaking. Gary. <laughs> General Motors. Okay. <laughs> Gary gets it. <laughs> That's what I was going to oh. say before you said that, Tom. So. Uh. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I mean, Tom, he didn't even really give you a hint. All right, question number nine. OpenAI has ChatGPT. Google has Gemini. But what is Meta's family of LLMs called? Gary. Bard? Not Bard. Okay. That's Google. Bard is Google's, yeah. Right. Google's, yeah, okay. But so you're, but you're, you know, you're going down the right path. Gary. Is it not just called Oh Oh George? <laughs> oh, Go ahead, George. Is it not just Meta GPT? It's no. not Meta GPT. Um, it the name almost makes you feel like you're at the zoo, Gary. Oh, at the zoo. Um A petting zoo. Maybe. Tom mentioned Winamp earlier today. Just made oh, me yeah. oh. nostalgic. I, I'm it's sorry, I'm about off topic. Llama, right? Yep, that's llama. it. Okay. That's I was it. I was trying to make it Lambda. So. <laughs> no, Llama. I actually read uh, it as Lambda enough. quite okay. often. Yeah. Uh, even though it's yes, it's big big L, big two L's, little A, big M, big A. That stands for is... large language model meta. AI. So Meta's in the name, just not the acronym. Exactly. All right. Final question in our lightning round. What did Meta do in response to the passing of Canada's Bill C-18, a.k.a. the Online News Act? What did Meta do in response? Tom D. Tom D. Did they withdraw from the market? They did. They did. 
Well, they, they didn't be a little withdraw more the entire service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like a much more specific. Yeah, now, they still offer Facebook in Canada. So what did they withdraw from the market? C eighteen is also known as the Online News Act. Gary. Uh, they they uh, withdrew their news coverage. That's okay. correct. That's correct. I'll give it to you. Yeah, they All blocked right. news. So the, yeah. Facebook actually doesn't have news coverage, but they blocked news for Instagram and Facebook users to comply. All right. So looks like, what do we got here? What's the total here? Um, we got Gary, one, two, three, three four. Um, we got George with two. And we've got Tom with one. So I think we've got a clear winner. And that is you, Gary. Congratulations. I hope you feel as good as we felt um, trying to stump y'all on these questions, which were really quite hard, Roger. (laughs) 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 Maybe some softballs next holiday season. (laughs) All right. For our second challenge, uh, it's there's no wrong answers uh, unless you're on the other side of the debate from another person. It's the great debate. We've done this on GDI a bunch. You know, is taco a sandwich kind of stuff. Uh, And our debate question is simply this, and then we'll just open it up to people arguing one way or another. But we want to find out what side you're on first. Is Star Wars American or British? That is the debate question that Roger has put forth in front of us today. Uh, Let's start with you, George. Where do you fall on the great debate? Is Star Wars American or British? Good question. Good question. Which side will you I'd argue? You're going to have to argue a side. Ultimately, ultimately, it's American. Ultimately, it's American, says that's, the Brit. That's what I'm deciding. Yeah. Uh, Tom, is Star Wars American or British? What side of this debate will you like to uh, start on? Hmm. I think I agree with George that it is ultimately American. Ultimately American. All right, Gary, will you make it unanimous amongst the listeners? Is Star Wars... American or British? It's as American as you can get. American is apple pie. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, bad guys, the bad guys have British accents. So, uh. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Uh, before we get to Sarah's side of this argument, uh, we did we did have these these sorts of points that Roger would like to put in front of you. The original and the sequels were shot in Britain with mostly British cast and British extras. Uh, British accents, as Gary just pointed out, pervade the empire. Not always evil. Sometimes, you know, know, Mon Mothma. Uh, Prop designers who came up with the designs for aliens, droids, weapons, etc. were all British. Sarah, where do you fall? On is Star Wars American or British? I mean, I've never considered it to be British. Uh, Definitely the accents. Um, But you've got your... Well, I'm also thinking old school Star Wars. Maybe I should, if we're thinking of just the the, the entire galaxy, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. whole galaxy of programming, maybe there's a little bit more British in there. But ultimately, you know, it's Luke, Leia, and Han. They're American. Uh, They're I mean, not. It, They're from Tatooine, Alderaan, oh, okay. and Corellia. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, they're... Uh, the actors that I loved very much as a child um, are American, so I can't decouple that from my answer. Star Wars is American. All right. Uh, I, I don't know how you all can say that Star Wars is American when it was entirely shot in Britain with British people in the cast. Yeah, you named the Americans on here, but they're not from but America. They're the, but they're the best ones. Yeah. George George Lucas was American, right? Yeah, it was ultimately his idea. Beatles yeah. recorded songs written by Americans almost exclusively in their earlier days. So that makes the Beatles American. Oh, Tom. I... <laughs> it's the great debate. What do you mean, oh, Tom? Yes. This as, is what we're as... to <laughs> I, I, I am going to jump in here as the producer is allowed. Uh, producer's uh, privilege here. Um, I will actually argue that uh, Star Wars is very much British because you would not have 
the Star Wars that you know, the look, the feel, without the British influence. The director for the for Empire Strikes Back, British. Uh, the directors for the sequels, British. Um, a lot of the way the, the the worlds feel, the way the the costumes and all that, all British. Br- uh, a very British sensibility into the construction of R2-D2 in C-3PO and Chewbacca. If you actually saw what the original drawings were like that Lucas had for Star Wars, um, they're very much different. And I don't think you, I, I don't think I could bridge that gap. There's a really good series from the BBC on Star Wars made in Britain that it goes through uh, point by point on why Brit, uh, why Star Wars in many cases is more British than it is American. Well, Has Roger Zealand, swayed any of you? No. Not George, Barry. national pride, national pride. George, Tom, Sarah, has Roger swayed you? I have to say, uh, he's pretty convincing to be yeah, honest. But some good points. Go ahead, George. No, I will yeah, say same. this: watch and if you have if you have, if you have Disney streaming, if you watch Andor. You will. There is a feel to it that is very Star Wars and very familiar, and it's because it was done all in Britain with British extras, British writers, British director, British everything. It is is as British as Jaguar or Jaguar, uh, or uh, uh, the Big Ben or <laughs> all the, the things you could Jag, say. Jaguar. Well, what's the other Britain thing that Britons like to point out? Land Rover. Uh, Land Rover. That's it. I had I had a Cortina once. English Ford. Yeah, it's a Ford, but in Britain. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. You're pretty Who... passionate about this, Roger. Okay, Star Wars. I is see British. why Roger picked this because he yeah. wanted to make this argument. <laughs> You're right. It is a fine. very <laughs> Doctor Who is British. Yes. Um, Black Mirror is British, even though some of it's set in uh, in America. Um, but uh, not Star Wars. Star Wars that belongs to us. Uh... Sorry, George. Not, e- not even George like a compromise, <laughs> not like a War of 1812, uh, Ghent, Treaty of Ghent, nothing. No, we get to split split things 50-50, no? I'll, I'll, I'll give you 10%. 10%? No, you have to be Wow, you're 10%. a hard bargainer. <laughs> George, you have found your inner Britain. Embrace it. And may the force be with you. Uh, Tom, Sarah, we uh, we we have uh, Roger and George on the yes, it is British. Uh, Gary on the no, it's American side. Where do you, where do you f- end up at the end of our debate? Tom, what do you think? Have you been swayed? Uh, no, because of all the times I've seen Star Wars, I've never thought of it as as British. It's it's always been American. Yes, there are British actors. Yes, Obi Wan Obi Wan both versions is british but that's incidental it was made by george lucas it was all his idea i'm guessing they just did it in the uk just because of budget it was probably cheaper over there at the time i have no idea i mean yeah yes that is that is true but imagine tom Selleck as obi-wan and that's not obi-wan that's just tom Selleck without a mustache yeah i just i gotta i gotta stick with it i i think probably uh there's just too much of being a kid in the good old us of a uh when star wars came onto the scene well actually i wasn't alive yet but you get my point um and yeah, I always did wonder, like, why are there so many accents in a galaxy? And it's a long time ago. Like, wasn't there, like, not even in America? But we don't know. We weren't there. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with my my original gut and say it's American. As, Tom, as and, Gary and, said, as, 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 as much as apple pie is. And, Tom, you're, you're sticking with it. Star Wars is American then. Yeah, I'm sticking with that. All right. It's three to two. Star Wars is American. That is the end of the great debate. Uh, folks, if you have feedback about this, if, if you're on a different side than these folks, uh, or you want to mention anything that gets brought up on the show, get in touch with the DTNS audience at DTNS Show on X, at DTNS Show dot MSTDN dot social on Mastodon, at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, and DTNS Picks with an X, DTNS P I X on Instagram and Threads. All right.
Final challenge to you all. This is a fun one. We just get to use our imaginations here. Okay, so here goes. The goal of this challenge, which is called Mount Rushmore, a real place in America. Goal of the Mount Rushmore game is simple. If you could create your own version of Mount Rushmore based on tech hardware, gadgets, which four things would you choose to be in your Mount Rushmore of tech hardware? No, Gary, we've got inspired, some notes from you. But uh, This is inspired by uh, uh, Marshall McLuhan Variety Hour podcast. They do this all the time, and I, I like this idea. So, so we want to acknowledge that. Yeah. So we've got some notes from you in here, Gary. You've obviously put some thought into it. Would you like to go first? Uh, sure. sure. Uh, go th- for all four here? Uh, yeah, your four, yeah, okay. four gadgets. Uh, all right. Well, I, I started off with uh, the PDP-11. Um, I'm, you know, approaching the middle of uh, late youth in my life here, and so I've been around for a while. And uh, the, the first computer I ever wrote an application for was in Fortran 4 in 1974 on a uh, PDP-11-based mainframe uh, called a deck 10. And, uh, um, it was like the first really popular, what they called mini computer at the time. It wasn't that many compared to what we have now, but, uh, it was, uh, uh, and, and I also, I ran a, uh, uh, microcircuit, uh, test machine that was powered by a PDP 11. And I even mm. thought about it the other day, I was watching three days of the condor and from 1975, and one of the first scenes, there's a PDP-11, right, front and center. So uh, it's the first mini computer uh, that had wide use, preceded the VAX. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'd put that up there as my first uh, thing. The next one's also a deck product. Uh, it's the, the VT-100 Dumb Terminal. Uh, when I started programming, I sat down in front of a key punch machine, and, you know, I'd, I'd punch these cards out, and I'd put them in a deck, I'd put them on a shelf, and an operator would come out, run them through the computer, and then I would get a printout, or maybe another deck of cards. Um, and one day, I, one of the operators came out and sort of grabbed me by the shoulders and took me into a dimly lit room where they had a little TV set with a, with a, a typewriter keyboard in front of it. And uh, that was a VT-100 terminal, which saved a lot of paper. Um, <laughs> Also saved a lot of frustration because if you made a mistake, you could just backspace over it. And, uh, so, uh, and then the third thing uh, would be the Apple Macintosh, uh, the first one. Uh, it brought a uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, a graphic, well, yeah, graphical user interface, uh, an intuitive uh, graphical user interface to to the masses. And in my case, at that time, uh, by that time I was working, I was still working at Hughes Aircraft Company, and I was working as a test engineer writing test instructions for uh, the techs. And uh, up until then, we had had to write them out in pencil on, uh, on a piece of paper, and then if we had any circuit diagrams or anything like that, we had to actually draw them. And then we'd send the text out to a typing pool to get it typed up, and we'd get mim- mimeographed, uh, and uh, then we would interleave the uh, any graphics we had with them, and with the Mac, I put a lot of typing pools out of business. We uh, we just did the whole thing by ourselves, and it took it took a lot less time. So I would definitely put the Macintosh up there. And my last product, uh, I I, I kind of um, went back and forth on this one, but uh, it's another Apple product, the iPod. And uh, that allowed you, uh, the first one, if you only had a thousand songs in your uh, library, you could take your whole music library with you. And, uh, um, you know, it, it eventually evolved into what we now carry around in our, uh, in our pockets, uh, iPhones. Um, and uh, it uh, started up something, I, I, I don't know, they're, they're getting really, really popular they're called podcasts. Never and, catch uh, on. No, no, never catch on. Um, and, uh, and so I think, uh, yeah, those are my four things, uh, for, love it. Uh, for, uh, Mount Rushmore, the tech Mount I Rushmore. I love it. That's a, I like your Mount Rushmore, Gary. All right. Uh, well, George and Tom, you've had a little time to think as Gary was, uh, explaining his Mount Rushmore. Uh, George, why don't you go second? 
Okay, sure. Um, so, when I was thinking about Ma Mount Rushmore, obviously you want four iconic sort of, uh, sort of um, items up on the Mount Rushmore, right? So I, I was just thinking about the most iconic looking sort of items. Um, I've got the iPhone. Um, obviously, you know, made famous by um, Jobs' um, announcement, you know, combining all elements. You've got the iPod, you've got the phone, you've got the internet. So, and obviously, an iPod itself as an icon is, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone recognizes it. Uh, secondly, I've got a computer console i've picked the nez uh which is the yeah it is called the nez isn't it yeah and i put that because um for me i felt that was when i recognized gaming and actually um my whole family recognized gaming was um becoming popular um and obviously mario the mario games everybody knew what mario was and um, yeah, so that put, puts gaming on the map, let's say. The other icon I was thinking about was the Sony mm -hmm. Walkman. You can't not recognize the uh, the, the, the blue one uh, made famous uh, most recently with the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, but also you've got the iconic yellow sports one. I, I think do. Sarah it's said you, you still got yours. Um, I'll never give it up. It still works. Fine. Why would I? Yeah, so just just the word Walkman is iconic in itself. And then lastly, I was debating about whether to put a Prius mm. or a Tesla. So either of those sort of um, signaling the uh, yeah the end of the combustion engine as we know it. I like your Mount Rushmore, George. Good stuff. All right, Tom D. You've got four iconic Mount Rushmore um, uh, things to chip away into stone. And what will you be revealing? Well, um, iPhone was mentioned specifically, but I wrote specifically down smartphones. So that would include mm -hmm. Androids as well as iPhones. And so I got my iPhone here. Because, you know, this changed everything the way we do everything. Mm -hmm. Like, the way I communicate now is not how I did it 20 years ago. No. I mean... Not yeah, not, no. Not it, it, everyone to. has a smartphone in a way that, that people didn't have computers. So that's, that's, a, that's a great one. Yeah. So going off of smartphones, we've got the e-readers. The e-ink e-readers. Which, you know, you now a giant pile of books. Now that's your giant pile of books. Yeah. Much more accessible and so much portable. easier to carry that around. And yeah. and and people that's one of those single use devices that has survived in a way that a lot of others either have it or become nostalgia items like, like iPods. Yeah. So my third item fiber optic cables. Mm. These connect the globe. We don't have these. We don't have the super fast, super reliable internet that we have now. Yeah, Espe uh, think under sea cables, right? Not just the mm. ones that come to your home. You may be like, right. well, I don't have fiber in my home, but all of the, the, the backbones of the internet are fiber. Yeah, but it's still basically this. This is basically the same thing. It's just a, fi a fiber optic cable. Yep. And then finally, um, well, don't have a uh, visual for this, but GPS. Mm -hmm. That changed how yeah. we got around. Instead of piles of paper apps, now we got our phones telling us where to go and how to get to places. Just pick up your phone again. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right. There you they go. Kind of, they get right kind of there. big bookends, you know, nice symmetry mm -hmm. for your yeah. Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, that's my four. All right. These are good. These are good. Everybody's Everybody had something a little unique, something a little different. Thanks for uh, using your imagination, and uh, we'll all, I don't know, be building our Mount Rushmore's. I don't know, maybe in our own backyards or something. It'll be a fun holiday event. So, yeah, get to 
whittling stone. Is that what? What do you? you, Yeah, it's harder, but that's the right way. Yeah. (laughs) She Uh, would. It's gonna take take a while, guys. So get started today. Chisel and a hammer. Yeah. Chisel. I would think think more explosive. Yeah. There we go. Mm, Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. I like the way you think. Good stuff. All right. Well, uh, thanks to all three of you for being here. It's always really fun to be able to not just, you know, see you, but talk to the folks that uh, see and listen to us uh, day after day. So thanks to you, George Sang, so much for being with us. And I hope the weather is good in your part of the world. Um, Unfortunately, not not at the moment. It's just raining. So British weather for you. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, uh, if you want to hit me up, I'm on the uh, all the socials at um, Geo Yakult. Yakult, cool. like the yogurt drink. Indeed. That's how it's spelled, thanks right? For- yeah, just so people know how to spell it. In fact, many of you um, have seen George around, even though you might have only known him by his handle. Now, Tom, I'm going to do my best here because you didn't help me beforehand, and I really should have asked. Tom D. Gian Vittorio Jr. How did I do? That's pretty close. I always okay. say D. Gian Vittorio. Okay. That's a pretty cool last name. Gotta, gotta say. Thank you. Um, and uh, Tom, it's been super fun. Um, I know you're a football fan because I'm able to get take a little peek into your office. Um, but uh, let folks know where they can find you when, when you're not with us. Uh, I would just go with my Twitter handle, Captain Jack 913 I hardly ever post anything on there. But really, if you want to find me every week, uh, twitch.tv slash wskies1 is uh, Friday night Jackbox game nights. That's They're super fun. Love it. And finally, Gary Fisher. Thanks so much for being with us today. Um, oh, let welcome. folks know how, how they, can, they can find you and, and, and what you're up to. Well, what I'm up to mostly these days is I have a Substack newsletter called Diary of a Senior Geek, which is a continuation of an old podcast that I had called Diary of a Senior Geek. And I'm actually republishing some of the episodes of my old podcast, uh, remastering them, uh, just the ones that are on evergreen uh, subjects. Uh, So you might want to check that out. Just go to Substack and search for Diary of a Senior Geek. Excellent. Well, thanks to all three of you, and thanks to everyone out there who supports the show. We could not have done it without you. You can always support our show at any level at dailytechnewsshow.com slash Patreon. Speaking of patrons, we don't have live shows this holiday week, but we're normally live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2100 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. But we will see you tomorrow with our best of Good Day Internet 2023. Should be fun. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>